Robin. <laughs> Salut, Peter Katz. How are you today? I'm doing well. I thought I would. Uh, I thought I'd start with a little French today. I'm. I'm. Uh, in San Diego right now for an event, but I'm a, about to give a keynote in French to about 10,000 students in Saskatchewan. So uh, this is a real, uh, <laughs> from my hotel room here, so this is a real uh, bilingual international affair. So I thought I would uh, greet you with some French. Well, I'm thrilled, and I'm joining you from South Carolina, and so I just once again love the fact that, like, none of this on paper actually ever makes sense, right? Like, if anyone was, like, just seeing it, it's like, oh, you're in San Diego doing a French keynote for families and community and children in Saskatoon, and we're talking in French with Robin being in South Carolina. This is one of the things that bring me deep joy. I think... What we should actually be doing in this hour, you know, or the, what we would not, what we'd be doing if we were not doing this is we'd both be just under the covers, <laughs> just like breathing. <laughs> uh, and uh, I know you, you sent me a, a video this morning of, of your keynote that you did, and, and there was like uh, raucous sound and lights. Uh, it seemed like before Robin came out and got everybody to drop into their hearts. Is that accurate? Oh my goodness, it literally was. I walked in the room and it was like 7.30 in the morning and there was a band playing. There was like <laughs> strobe lights. There was, uh, they had like a smoke machine and it was like a, like a corporate meeting. And like, this is mm. how they like, this is how apparently they're rolling in Columbia, South Carolina. So I actually sent you like this like micro video, like, cause that was even like t an hour and a half feeder before it even started that this is how wow. like, fired up these groups were and as i shared with you in my just kind of moment being like oh my gosh like i am i am an introvert coming into this very very loud busy world and uh yeah so i did kind of send out a lifeline because i uh, every once in a while you have to kind of ground yourself and as you know peter you're one of my wonderful humans in my world that I get to be like, quick, ground, ground, safe, need safety. Um, and uh, I recognize you'd recognize all the gear on the stage as well, because it literally was a rock concert. So I thought you might appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really just took the video you sent me and then I just like zoomed in on the, I don't like, oh, <laughs> what amp is that? <laughs> yeah, Fender. Um, well, Fender. Uh, Marshalls. Uh, it was well, Marshall. <laughs> well, you know your stuff, Robin. Oh, uh, that's um, a, a question for you, um, mm. you know, beyond uh, texting your friend Peter, what, what other rituals did you do, do you do, maybe helpful for others to, uh, who find themselves in these moments where they need to transition or ground themselves? What, what else do you do to sort of find that grounding before you, you go out and do your thing? Oh, Peter, what a great question. And I am so big on like, essentially like creating those little rituals that mean something to me. And as soon as I activate them, I all of a sudden start to feel better. So I'll share with you. And this is something that people ask me about all the time. I literally like start getting kind of into the headspace of like going into a room and opening my heart and wanting to be of service. Like literally like before I even get to the venue by what I'm even wearing. So I always wear running shoes. I always wear like one of my, you know, a pair of Jordans or Air Force Ones because like that is literally how I can feel the most safe and stable, like rooted to the ground. Mm. And early in my career, I felt pressure that I should wear like cute high heels or some like funny, like extra kind of these different type of shoes when I would see a lot of other really remarkable women take stages in these amazing shoes. And I tried it and it felt terrifying. And so for me, mm. even just like footwear. <laughs> so literally it's like, and when I tie on my presenting shoes, Peter, it's literally like keynote Robin activated. And so that's mm. like a big one for me is like actually feeling as stable as possible on my own feet. The second one, whenever I'm going into the venue, like I have like a playlist that I listen to and I literally just do my best to kind of like get into my own little bubble of safety. So I listen to these familiar songs that give me that sense of, you know, just like this is what I need to be feeling and kind of gets me in that kind of headspace pregame songs. And then when I walk into the space, I literally send out one text or a note to someone in my community um, just so that way I don't feel alone. So because a while 
often when we go into these spaces, we don't know anyone. So I will choose to send a text message to like whether, you know, uh, you know, to Jeff or, or to the kids or to you or, or somebody else who kind of knows what's going on in my world. Because just by taking that moment to like connect myself, even though I'm far away from my text message, just gives me this little kind of link between head and heart and home. So I'll always text somebody right before I do what I'm about to do and like just give them kind of like, like, hey, this is what I'm about to do. And then that way I know even just like, even though they're apart from me, Peter, that we're, we're connected. Those are my kind of go-tos. I love that, Robin. I'm going to, I'm going to borrow some of those from you. Um, <laughs> I, I really appreciate the idea of, of just connecting with a human that, that sort of knows you um, and also maybe knows you beyond what you do, right? A lot of yes. times where our, our identity is tied up in sort of how we present ourselves and we both know that there's, a, there's another self that's yeah. under there that has different parts. Um, I, I was reminded of a previous podcast episode when you said, you know, you're tying up your Jordans and, and uh, you know, keynote Robin engages. In a previous episode, you talked about airport Robin. And uh, so I, could, I don't know whether that's when you put on the jogging pants and the fanny pack or what that outfit looks like. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, what, what does airport Robin look like? What's what's the outfit there? There you go. Well, so airport Robin. Oh, my goodness. It's a whole thing, Peter. It literally is like, oh, yeah, I, I pack the same. I have the same luggage. I have my crossbody. I also wear headphones because I get, am very sensitive to like lots of noise with my ADHD. Mm -hmm. So I actually find like blocking out so the sensory. So I always listen to if you ever see me in an airport. I'm actually listening to James Blunt. I will. I actually have like his songs curated in a particular order that gets me through the airport every single time. It's like an old friend whispering in my ear. And I, again, wear running shoes. And this is another key. I always wear pants with pockets. I can, I don't know mm. how persons who like wear tights like do it because like my left pocket has my Nexus, my right pocket has my phone, my front right pocket has my earphone, like my earbuds case. Um, and like, it's literally like, I always just put things in the same pockets and uh, yeah, that's how I roll in airports. You just gave me an idea. We don't have any official merch yet for in time that we can put out some cargo, <laughs> cargo pants that are called like, you know, a airport yeah. pants and I love uh, it. maybe with like, 12 pockets on them and mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing I, actually yeah. I, I know some of your your playlist songs Robin and I was <laughs> I was uh, in Mexico and by the pool they had a like a sort of you know when they like remake songs just like instrumental yeah. and they had an instrumental version of turning page by sleeping at last and I was like and I know you love that song so much yes! I, was like, I, I, I couldn't it would just seem so like unexpected that I mean I'm obviously you know an amazing artist but it's it's yeah. not sort of like w part of the the total zeitgeist of music that everybody knows and there was like this remake of that done on like a Casio keyboard or something I was like oh my gosh so yeah made me think of you I love that. I love that. Absolutely. And, and Peter, just so you know, like, this is just like the power, this is the power of music and what you do. And mm -hmm. when you do your work in community, it's like, I just love the fact that music can transform us. It can provide us like this hedge of protection, uh, where we feel mm -hmm. safe and grounded. And, you know, I was talking with one person about kind of like strategies similar to this, like when they were nervous to do something and, and I invited them to think about using the power of music to like create ritual and habit and routine because as soon as those particular songs pop into kind of your headphones, um, your brain is like, okay, what this means something, right? And so, for example, that mm. song triggering you in Mexico, you're like, hey, I remember Rob like this is one of Robin's go tos. But what happens yeah. when we start to build that repetition? So, for example, as soon as I get my airport headset going, like my body's like, oh, this is what we do now. So it kind of takes away mm. some of the like indecisiveness or some of the negotiating that we always are trying to do in the moment because we just have like these really like ingrained habits. And what's interesting mm. is when we're in stressful situations, Peter, we actually like will regress back to our most like basic habit in that situation. So if we train ourselves that our habits actually serve the purpose, it actually can like alleviate a lot of unnecessary stress. I love that. Yeah, I can, it's just, it's I just sort of getting this visual of like putting certain parts of you just on autopilot, but like yeah. a good autopilot that you, that is tried and tested and true. And, um, and I, I, I forget who, 
you know, I listened to so many podcasts and books and whatever, but they, they talked about this idea of, of decision fatigue. And so like that we, you know, there's only so many decisions that we can make in a day before our brain is just kind of like, all right, that's enough and so fit. And like, that's always the outfit. Yeah. And, and like all these kind of micro decisions that we generally put upon ourselves in the morning, like, oh, what am I going to wear? What am I going to have for breakfast? Yeah. It's like, we've, we've kind of dr depleted our, our decision-making resources. So mm -hmm. I love the idea of being like, okay, this works. This is, this is what helps me get through. When I do this, I don't have to worry about it. I mean, I'm the same. I, 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 I have like my outfit for the stage. Yeah. It's like, like, you know, it's like black shirt, jean jacket. Um, sometimes if it's a slightly fancier event, I have this like white shirt that I wear, yep. jean jacket. And <laughs> when I put that on, it's like, okay, this is go time. I'm never thinking about like, what am I going to wear? Mm -hmm. what, blah, blah, blah. I know what I'm going to wear. Yeah. And then... I can just think about, okay, what am I going to deliver? How am I going to show up for these people? And, and just sort of get into that place of, of presence versus thinking about these things that, that don't, don't really, it's not the moment for me to be making those decisions. Yeah, Peter, I absolutely love that. And it's interesting because we actually, I just did an Instagram video about um, decision fatigue yesterday because mm. I tied it in actually with, um, right now we're doing a project where we're talking about like one habit per week. And the one that I chose was actually my bedtime ritual. And and this idea that like, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to go to sleep and wake up at the same time because I'm hopping countries, I'm hopping time zones. So when I was thinking about my self-care for the week, what I leaned into was like, I need the predictability of a consistent bedtime ritual. So it doesn't matter what time I am going to bed or where I'm going to bed, I'm gonna do the same behavior. Because again, what happens is that alleviates some of that like uncertainty that happens when we're in new spaces. So like, I wasn't sure again, being in all these different hotels and all these different cities, like so much of it is uncertain, but what I do know to be true and what is within my control is this habit and this routine that I'm gonna do. And this is the other big idea. As soon as I like identify what that habit is, it's already a done decision. So I don't negotiate with myself in terms of whether or not mm. I feel like doing it. Right? Like Robin mm. decided on Sunday that this is what she was going to do. So last night when I was totally exhausted and I was like, oh, I don't really feel like doing my whole bedtime routine. I was like, no, no, no. You've already made this commitment to yourself. This is a non-negotiable. For seven days, this is what you're doing while you're on the road. And as soon as like, it's like you kind of talk back to yourself a wee bit, I like was like, yeah, right. And all of those feelings of like not wanting to do it actually started to dissipate. And then as soon as I did it, it was like a little win. So again, that commitment to ourselves is so important with this as well. Mm, I love that. I, I'm curious, like this idea of like sort of making a decision for the week like this is going to yeah. be my habit like uh, do you like what does that look like is it like do you do you put 15 minutes in your calendar and say like okay this is where i'm going to think about these things like like how how ritualized is the de is the the decision making process mm -hmm. for your rituals i'm i'm just curious about that I love this question. Um, I love all of our questions, Peter. I'm getting pretty hyped up. These are fun things I love to talk about. So okay. when I so when I'm going into when I'm going into something like um, kind of forecasting my week ahead, what I like to do is identify like one healthy habit or like one practice that's going to be like my wee little lifeline that I'm going to lean into to help me get through that season of what I'm going through. So I do it, I personally like to do it on Sundays where it's like fresh start, fresh week. What is that one habit that if I do consistently throughout the week, it's going to give me the best return on my investment. And knowing that, for example, on Sunday, I was like, you know, setting my alarm for, you know, 1 a.m because that's when I had to wake up and knowing that I was going to have such a disruptive sleep pattern for the week, that's when I decided my sleep ritual is going to be the best return on my investment to focus on. Um, it wasn't going to be like, you know, eating salads at the airport, right? It wasn't going to be, um, you know, making sure I, you know, get enough stretching in or making sure I journal, right? That wasn't going to be the thing that was going to help me the most. What was going to help me the most was a bedtime ritual. Hmm. I love that. I love that. Getting your stretching in. Confession, Robin. I'm wearing yeah. my gym shorts and my, uh, <laughs> my running shoes right now. <laughs> I came from the gym and then I had a sound check. And, uh, and so, so for me, uh, my, my thing this week, because again, I'm, I'm also doing the, the time zone things, was just like get up and like move. put on the gym shorts and move. move. And, uh, and whether like, you know, yesterday morning, 
I had 20 minutes in the gym. And, and, you know, there's part of my brain that's like, well, what's the point of that? But the point is, is that I said I was going to do it and I did it and I still got something out of it. And, you know, whether it was like the the perfect uh you know thing that's gonna build this muscle group didn't matter the point is that i i, I kind of honored myself by doing it and and i felt proud and and i i, I kind of carried that throughout the day and i, I yes. did the same thing today i was like okay i've got all these other things that i'm doing and these decided that this is what i want to be consistent with this week i mean i didn't do the sort of same maybe degree of intention that you did around mm-hmm. planning your week but it was it was more of just this like sort of quiet inner decision that i yeah. i packed enough gym clothes uh so like enough sets of shorts and tank tops so that i could work out every day because if i only packed two then they would get stinky and (laughs) (laughs) and then i would you know and if i didn't pack like i packed enough gym socks for every single day Mm -hmm. so maybe that was my my sort of way of 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 setting that ritual for myself yeah peter i absolutely love that and this is what what my invitation is especially for those who are listening who are like thinking about some of this as well there are so many things that we ought to be doing right? Like there's just so many things that we ought to be doing and we should be doing. And when you get like clarity on like, this is the one behavior I'm going to commit to, it actually kind of gives ourselves permission to just kind of like take the focus, all of those other things that you could also be doing and just go for that like one day win. And so, yeah, I could also be doing all these other things, as I said, but every time that I do that one behavior, it's just, it's like me against myself with that one behavior. So even with you doing your movement and again, it doesn't matter if it's 20 minutes or whatever. It's the fact that that discipline is something that you could look back because when we think about where do we grow our confidence, our confidence Mm -hmm. actually comes not from us feeling good all the time or like having post-it notes on our mirrors in our life that we have follow through, that we can figure things out, that we can problem solve, that we keep the promises to ourself because then you know Mm -hmm. you're unstoppable with that relationship with yourself. You know, what just hit me as you were saying that, Robin, is there's actually no difference between how we build trusted, connected relationships with others, right? Doing what mm-hmm. we say we're going to do and, and, you know, that, that, that connection, that consistency, like it's the exact same as how we would build that trust and confidence uh, and connection with ourselves. I just kind of yeah. put that together as you were saying it. It's like, yeah. if we want to grow that relationship with ourselves, it's like, well, how, how do we grow relationships with anybody else? Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's through exactly what you just described. Yeah. And Peter, I love that that came together for you because, you know, I think there's so much we talk about, like with relationship repair, obviously with other people, but I truly believe Mm. there's a lot of us that need some of that relationship repair with ourselves and Mm. we don't even kind of know where to start. So I encourage people to start by, you know, keeping some promises to yourself. So that way, again, you can start to build that trust again. And we can get on kind of the same page with all of the parts of who we are. And even, for example, you know, I know often people, you know, we have the best intentions, right? We set it with these really good intentions and then we kind of put other person's needs and wants ahead of our own. So it's almost like this Mm. kind of self-sacrificing where it's like, oh, it's okay. Like, I, yeah, maybe I didn't get to what I needed to do for me today, but look at all the things that I did for everyone else today. And what's Mm -hmm. fascinating about that, Peter, even the expression, like my heart goes out to you, right? When we think about like Mm -hmm. all that we're doing for others, when does our hearts go in to us? Mm. Our our hearts go out to everyone. We're giving them the heart. But when does that heart, that, that kind of light shine back on ourselves? And what happens so often, I think, is it doesn't. And then we start to feel like unseen and we start to feel kind of like, alone and just like, Mm. you know, and just not really valued and appreciated. But the reality is that starts with our own relationship we have with ourselves. That is hitting me quite hard, Robin, like as I'm listening to you and the idea of, of like repairing relationship with self, I'm, I'm like, I'm quite almost, I'm quite overwhelmed by it, to be honest. And I, I, I think what's, what's, um, illuminated in me is, is that I, I, I need to do more of that work um and and yet i i i spend a lot of time um in my career like encouraging others to connect with themselves and and i you know teach people about lifelines and 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 connecting and all those things and um 
yeah, I, I think I, I have fallen a little bit out of, out of, uh, that relationship with, with myself in the process. And, um, and so I really appreciate that reminder. And again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just zooming in on, on, on this connection that I'm just making as, as I was listening to you that like, if, if I sort of ignored another person or, uh, you know, kept rescheduling on another yeah. person the way I do with myself, that relationship would, would fall apart and they would be like, yeah. Hey buddy, like, uh, that's yeah. not okay. Um, and yet I do that with myself and, um, yeah. I, 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 anyways, I'm quite affected by, by, the, by hearing that. So, oh. um, thank you for that, uh, that, uh, that nudge, I, I will take it to heart. Oh, my friend, I, as you were sharing that reflection, I literally was holding my heart for you, mm. like physically and intellectually and emotionally, because, oh my gosh, this is, I think, just such a big truth for so many of us. And mm. I, I just honor your bravery for really recognizing that how we've been treating ourselves, how most of us treat ourselves, it's we wouldn't necessarily, you know, think of that as one of our best go-to relationships in our lives. Yeah. And that's yeah. the relationship that's going to be, you're going to live all of them is that relationship that we have with ourselves. And I think it's really normative, Peter, that, and especially in our culture that we kind of view it as like, almost like selfishness, you know, that kind of idea about being mm -hmm. self-centered isn't a compliment. Yeah. And one of the lessons I came upon is that I actually learned that when I'm self-centered and I'm being very compassionate with myself, I'm a better mother. I'm a better mm. colleague. I'm a better friend. I'm a better partner. When I'm actually mm. like taking the time to actually self-center, know what matters most and make it matter most. So even just the, our language, you know, for example, if I was to say like, oh my gosh, Peter, you are so self-centered. I don't think most of us would hear that as a compliment, but if we can right. be grounded in our truth and that be that place of like open, soft-hearted, ready to go, that's actually probably the best way we can show up for most of our relationships and the work we do. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about those two words, self-centered, that sounds like a great thing right? <laughs> <laughs> to be just to be grounded in, in, in oneself. And, and, um, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I remember when I was a kid growing up, like the, the greatest compliment that, that someone could give, and it, this seemed to always be said in relation to women. And I understand there's, there's, yeah. you know, gender and patriarchy, but you know, she was so selfless. Yes. Um, and so I wanted to be selfless too. And it was this, it was this great, um, honor to have sort of sacrificed yourself. And again, I, I know this was particularly cast upon women. Um, but I, I, I think there's a, if you think about selfless versus self-centered, I, I think self-centered is, is a much more, mm -hmm. um, noble pursuit as far as being connected to oneself and then being able to spill over and be yeah. the better mother or partner or friend yeah. or whatever, um, versus this, this sort of erasing of ourselves with this, this word selfless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, oh, like I just, I'm so inspired by this conversation because one of the things that I've learned as I'm like, I'm like tiptoeing into this space. I, I by no means mm. am an expert in understanding. I still have my own stuff that I work through my own demons. I exercise every day and what I have seen that it's reinforced me being like standing in that place of like respecting mm -hmm. that I have needs and meeting my own needs. It gives them almost mm -hmm. like this silent permission that they can do it too. And mm -hmm. that's what's actually been able to help me stay committed to this practice of, you know, I'm not needy. I have needs. <laughs> and when I can stand up for what those are, and then I see other women and especially again, you know, people in general, but when women kind of look at me and say like, yeah, why not you? Yeah. Why not mm -hmm. me? And I just feel like that has this remarkable, like ripple effect, uh, that can go through how we kind of change this idea of, you know, what it is to be like good and again, easy to love, easy to get along with mm -hmm. versus let me be at my best in myself and you will get the best out of me as well. 
I love that. And it, it just reminds me of, of how much of this is just like baked into our, our language, right? Like yeah. needy is a, is like a bad thing, but it's like having needs is a bad thing. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so I, I mean, I, I, I so a friend of mine just like posted a thing about sort of flipping language, like so much of the language we use, um, like, is is like violent like calling the shots or i'm gonna yeah. pull the trigger or, you know there's like yeah. there's all of this language that we use that has this aggressive background to it and and i i'm, I'm just i know my wheels are turning just thinking somebody else was sharing about uh, the idea like words that we use like incredible which means like you don't don't have credibility have credibility <laughs> you yeah. know or, or like all the all these different ways that it's sort of baked into us and how do we kind of reimagine some of those words uh uh is anyway i i get a bit word nerdy about that stuff but uh, i think it's it's really important what you're talking about and i equally jump on your word nerdy train and i love it because <laughs> i recently had somebody who said to me after a keynote they're like damn you are killing it and i looked at them like deer in the headlights and i'm like oh and i said i was really trying to bring some healing and then right. there was this like odd exchange where they were like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. was amazing. And it was heart centered. And I was like, oh, right, right, because right. like the way my brain heard you killed it was just like, oh, my gosh, that's the absolute polar opposite of what I was trying to bring into community. I was trying to like heal and offer like ways of like braiding these experiences together. Um, so like language is so powerful, even to the point, oh my goodness, I know last episode and the episode before we were talking about like how important it is to like let go of things. Mm. And I just heard, um, it was this interesting like exchange of another group talking at an airport. And this woman said, I will never forget that. And it was in relation to something mm. that wasn't positive. And I just thought, right. wow, why would you give your brain the command to never forget that? Like, why mm. in that moment would you give your brain the command to be like, don't you ever forget this? Because as soon as I heard that exchange, I was like, man, I would want to forget that pretty quickly. And I just, so again, even just how we talk to ourselves, like our body's always listening as Dr. Kessel would talk about. And, you know, and in this particular case, Peter, I'm going to tell you this, this story just really briefly, if it's okay. Um, this, uh, it was an exchange between a couple and this, um, it was not positive. And he said to her, he's like, she asked him quite a few times politely, like to keep it down, like people can hear you. And the guy said, no one can hear us. And I was like on the other side of the lounge and I actually said, I can, I heard all of this. <laughs> and, and then I had this moment where I was just like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Like Lyra, in a country, right. not my own, by myself, these are not my safety behaviors. And, but then I had this moment where afterwards the woman said to me as she walked by and I could tell I had a new ally. Um, she said to me in that particular case, she said, I won't forget that. And I hope that how she internalized it, Peter, was like, you know, people do know she matters. Like people want to stand yeah. up for people and people want to protect people and do what's right. And so I just thought it was so peculiar. I had two ends of this extreme. In one case, it was yeah. another woman who's like, I will never forget this. And it was like mm -hmm. drilling in negativity. And then at the other extreme, mm. this woman said to me, I'll never forget this, as in, like, stand up for yourself because you matter. Mm. I love that, Robin. And um, I was just uh, just reminded of uh, one of my one of my best friends. Uh, her her mom uh, passed away um, about a year ago and uh, just a really amazing woman and uh, she had this little thing that she taught taught my friend and 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 i picked up on that i love which is this little little ritual when there's something that she really wants to remember she she taps right here and she her. says record record. Uh, record you know record record and then when it's something that like she wants to like forget or release it's like on, on i forget where, where she tapped on i just remember the record one i think it was like on the other side or something like you know like let that delete. one go basically yeah delete. delete exactly yeah record like delete um yeah. and so i love that idea of, of even the same sentence i will never forget this things that we we truly want to become like be part of who we are becoming um and how do we like 
like maybe instead of I will never forget this for the things that are, are sort of ne negative or whatever, the things that we probably don't want to encode, it's like, I will release this, you know, or, or whatever that wording might yeah. be. So that I just love that little ritual of like record. And it's something that she, she would do just sort of privately, like just when there was a moment that she was really enjoying with her family or just kind of anything that she just wanted to remember, she'd just tap and just say, record, record. And I've, I've always uh, loved that. I could tell you more magical stories about that um, relationship, but I'm noticing our time. Um, and uh, I, I have a, a keynote. Uh, je vais parler en français. En français. Uh, en français. So, um, gosh, there's so many things that I wanted to, so many other threads I wanted to pull on. I, I, I had some pre-show rituals that I'd, I'd love to share with people, yes. so maybe I'll share some of those next you. All kinds of things. I had a whole other story I wanted to share with you, Robin, but uh, <laughs> there's just always such an abundance of, of things for us to talk about when we get together. Um, hopefully, this has been uh, of service to those of you mm -hmm. listening. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think this idea of, of a relationship with ourselves, thinking about the, the language that we're using and whether that's actually kind of creating what we want uh, so many beautiful nuggets uh, here today. Oh, Peter, thank you everyone for listening. And uh, I wish you all the best in the talk you're about to do. And to everyone listening, again, just thank you for the gift of your time and being here with us. So take good care. We'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>